GFCI, I mean, GFPE and GFCI protection. Receptacles installed in accordance with 55530A, that's the short power short outlets, power. can have individual ground fault protection set to open at currents not more than 30 milliampers. I don't know if I have a picture, I don't have it there. So in the short power outlet, I like to get a picture of a short power outlet right here. You, you have a breaker, and I need to get a picture of a breaker and a receptacle. So if you open, get the short power outlet, a little pedestal, and you open it up, you're going to see that there's going to be a 50 amp breaker, and there's going to be a 20 amp breaker, and there's going to be a twist lock 50 amp receptacle, and there's going to be a 20 amp receptacle. Receptical. And then, okay, well, the 50 amp receptacle has a 50 amp breaker, but that breaker is going to be a ground fault protector set at 30 milliampers. So that, and then the, the, the 20 amp, 125 volt, 120 volt, 125 volt receptacle is being supplied by a GFCI set at five milliampers. So when I get my boat and I plug it in short power, I'm having 30 milliampers of ground fault protection of equipment. That can't be five milliampers, can't be GFCI because it more than likely won't hold. So 30 milliampers is going to be the maximum level that you can set that protection. And if there's any kind of failure in your boat and the boat is in the water and it has a shaft and a rudder, and propellers, and there's a fault inside the electrical system, and you lost the effective ground fault current path coming to the boat itself, well, the leakage, not the leakage, the actual, the ground fault current can be limited to the water current path. It's not going to be, it's not going to clear a fault, but it will go more than 30 milliampers, and it will trip that ground fault protection of equipment, Brian, and and I was what, looking for that, that picture. That's, that's, that's picture. what it would look like. Yeah. And you yep. notice the buttons on these are orange and your GFPEs are usually not white. Right. There you go. It's got a 50 and a 30 in this. Oh, that one has one. a 50 and a 30. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now the feeder. Remember we talked about that pedestal? Probably need to get a picture of a pedestal, Brian. I don't know if I have a picture here. I don't have a picture. If I have a picture of a pedestal and I'm running a feeder, a 200 amp feeder out to that pedestal that could supply four, four. Bo or 100 amp feeder, well, that the short power breaker for the receptacle is set at 30 milliampers. Yep. But the feeder that runs out to the short power, that's set at 100 milliampers. So that way, in case it was a fault in the feeder somehow, and the feeder did not clear the fault, well, then it's going to trip the feeder ground fault protection of equipment. But it's set at 100 milliamps. You're thinking that, well, if you had four short power receptacles on that, each limited to 30 milliamps, that we probably won't have all of them having leakage to that value. And, it, and then, therefore, the ground fault protection of equipment on the feeder will open when there actually is a fault on the feeder and not likely to open on any of the short power outlets, unless possibly, and I don't know how this works out, um, where if you have a fault on a boat and it's more than 30 milliampers or more than 100 milliampers, and now you have both two ground fault protectors, right, connected together, will the 100 milliampere open after the 30 milliampere? What's the selected coordination? Coordination on that, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, maybe the 100 milliampere are tripping 30 dozen. Like, well, that must be the feeder. Well, probably at that level. I don't know which one would trip first. You know, it's going to go to 100, but that, does that 31 trip first? I don't know. What matters is this. The feeder has 100 milliampere ground fault protection of equipment set. The receptacle has 30 milliampere of ground fault protection set at the shore power pedestal, shore power outlet, and that provides the protection. Now, <coughs> There was a new rule brought in the 2020 code, which makes absolutely no sense at all. And here's what they said. Say, listen, you know, if you put three or more receptacles for shore power to boats, what is it? Where three or more receptacles supply shore power to boats, a leakage current measurement device shall be available and be used to determine leakage current from each boat that will utilize shore power. They're saying, you need to provide this Anytime you have more than three shore power receptacle outlets. And what this is, Brian, this is just an amp meter. Except it has a setting. Very high resolution amp meter. Yeah. It sets over yeah, here. Range. It's an MA. The yep. range goes from amps. You just click it down to MA, which is milliampers. 
and, and, and you know, because everything has a, a range that it works from, this works, let me get this here. This works plus or, what's this sense? What's, oh, this is, this is Hertz, I'm not worried about that. Where's my uh, current? Where's my range and my current? Right there on the uh, top right. Here? Yeah. So you're looking for your accuracy or your Yeah, yeah, ranges? yeah, my, my accuracy. Accuracy is the next next down. Nope, up, up, Here? up, up, right there. Oh, plus or, oh, oh, plus or minus, what's CTS? What's CTS? Counts and whatever range you're in. So what? what is that one? Oh, 60 hertz. Oh, 50, 60 hertz. Yeah. Yeah, but that's accuracy in hertz. I'm talking about the accuracy in amps. I don't think it's shown. I don't think I've oh, seen it. Oh, AC current. It's the next one down. Accuracy. AC amps. One or 2%. Right? Yeah. So if you had this thing set to 100 amps, well, 1.2% is going to give you 1.2 amps. Well, I can't measure, I can't measure, you know, milliampers. So I have to set it down. No. Oh, hey, here it is. The accuracy down here. Whatever it is, and I can't see. I think I'm missing some information down below down here. This will measure milliampers. But you can't take a regular amp meter that set it at a 200 amp range, and then it has a 1% accuracy, and now you're at 200 amps. Well, then you need to set this in into the milliamp range at 1% or 2%. Well, yeah, now that, that's going to pick it up. So now let's think about this. Let me go back here. I run a feeder, 100 milliamp year ground fault protection of equipment. I put then a pedestal, I put breakers, I put 30 milliamp years protection, and I have it all worked out. Let's just say that we had four shore power outlets and each one had 27 amperes of leakage of the four. Well, four times 27 comes out to be, I don't know, 108 amp milliamperes. Mm -hmm. Well, since it's 27 amperes each, well, there's not a problem because none of those four breakers are going to trip. But because the cumulative total of the four equaled more than 100 milliamperes, then the feeder drops them all out. The theory of this meter is like, wow, man, if the feeder dropped out, we got to find out which of these guys are the problem. Well, none of them are the problem because none of them was more than 30 milliamperes. It's just that they all added up. Because if any one was more than 30 milliamps, it would have taken out the 30 milliamp protection device. So having a leakage current detector that set an amp meter set at a very low range, measuring these things that none of them that are more than 30 milliampers becomes irrelevant. There's nothing you can do about that. Not only that, but if you did determine, well, this one is 27 and this one is 18, well, then we want to move you all. Are you actually going to be moving these boats all over the place because they're all within operating within 30 milliampers? And so there's a problem in, in to me in that the code is requiring a leakage measurement detection. It really won't matter because if it's tripping because it's more than 30 milliampers, well, I already know which one's the one that's no good. Right. And why are you requiring somebody to have a tool? And then it goes on the informational note about what it's trying to do. But this is an overreaction of the code panel because people are terrified of people getting killed in the water saying, let's get a recording. Or let's get something that can measure these things. Uh, let's find out which is the guy that's the problem. Well, you can find out which is the guy that's the problem. Just plug them in. Turn off all four receptacles, right? Turn one at a time. Did he trip? No. Turn the other one. Nope. Turn it off. Nope. Nope. Okay, so none of the boats are the problem. Turn them all on. Well, now it's tripping 100 milliampers. Well, that's because it's... More than one boat is a problem. Yeah. So here's a beautiful thing. You know, we live in a capitalist country, and I knew when this came out, you remember me saying this, I said, you wait, somebody's going to come out with something. And I'm like, you know, it's been like six months since we've talked about this. Let me see if somebody came out with something. What? And lo and behold, we now have a marina ground fault control panel, a multi-channel marina ground fault control panel where you put CTs on the individual outlets and it's got a little computer and a ground fault detector and a reset button and an alarm and the whole nine yards. So you can have this uh, GFPE on the feeder and you can have GFPE on the individual channels and it'll identify which ones have a problem. And you probably can get a nice pretty screen and you can Oh, it's see got a little the, screen the on boat, it. The boat layout, the whole thing of the boat layout. I, I don't see that on this one, but I'm That's, sure they have I would that. want it. Just I want to show oh, which boat yeah. I want to show yeah. it red. 
And yellow. And it will green. illuminate the LED pilot light and interrupt the circuit. I mean, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So it's getting there. All right, let's move on.